Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over CSS columns. I just put out a few videos dealing with multi-column layouts, and I don't want you to confuse those with some new CSS properties that can control the number of co columns and size and things like that. So let me just go ahead and throw this out here. I've got a uh, blank page set up, and um, here in Notepad++, got the title of my page, I'm going to do some internal styles here, and I've got a div container here in the body section. Let me go ahead and uh, put in some generic content. Right, and I'll just control D to duplicate all that. Control S to save over to my browser. I'm going to use a Chrome browser here, refresh. All right, so we've got a bunch of content. Now, let me kind of point out some new CSS properties you can use. So we can go ahead, oh, let me do this. Let me put in a uh, reset rule. Here we go. All right, so let's give this a try. I'm going to do uh, a WebKit prefix, and this is why I'm not a huge fan of the columns yet. WebKit column count, and I'm going to go ahead and do three. Now, just by doing this, of course, I didn't write it even remotely correct. I need a selector. I didn't have a selector in here. So this is going to be my container. Just too excited there. All right, so for my container, remember my container is just a div block, contains a whole bunch of text. It could be any kind of thing. It could be a paragraph or so, for that matter. I'm going to use a, basically I'm using the column count property, but I'm using the WebKit prefix, which is what you would use for uh, Chrome and Safari. And I'm saying three. Let me put a semicolon on that. Okay, so let me save this, jump back over to my browser and refresh. And now you can see I've got three columns of layout. Let me do a couple other things. What about uh, WebKit column gap? This is going to be the space in between the columns, and I'll make it big so it stands out. We'll do 100 pixels and refresh. There we go. More space in the middle, and let's put a line in there. WebKit column rule. And for this one, you can treat it like a border. So I could put in like five pixels solid, and then I can put a green in there. So now I have a solid green border in there. Of course, we could change that out to, if I could spell, dotted down, we've got a dotted border. So this is just a little bit about columns. Now, at, at first glance, you might be thinking, oh man, this is friggin' awesome. This is gonna save us from having to do all those floats and or positions or anything like that to make multi-column layouts. We're not quite there yet. Okay, so basically, if you don't have these WebKit prefixes, let me, uh, delete these out of here. If I don't have those, it doesn't work. Okay, so you have to put those WebKit prefixes in. Now check this out. If I save this and let me run it in Firefox, this is how it's looking in Firefox. See, it's not working there either. So what have you got to do for that? Well, you've got to copy these and then I've just got to put in a Moz so you've got to put in the Mozilla prefix to get that word and okay that's a little bit irritating but yeah it's workable uh, let me put a little bit of padding over on this how about 10 pixels so this is Firefox again so there's Firefox a little bit of padding let me jump over to Chrome things are back in business we got that going so that's pretty good too but these particular techniques don't work with, and by the way, you can use this with Opera also. With Opera, you don't need the prefix at all. So technically with Opera, we could just do this. Okay, so we could take care of something like that. Give me a quick second, I'll launch my Opera browser. There we go, I open that up on my other screen. So this is the Opera browser, and that's working with these basic properties here. None of this works with Internet Explorer though yet, and you can't discount that because whether you like IE or not, there's a percentage of your web visitors that do use IE. So to get this working is just a pain in the butt right now. So I'm not a fan of using this particular technique for an important structural part of your website. 
Maybe there's a section where it'll work, and if it doesn't work, everything's okay. But you don't want to use this for web layouts yet. But it's kind of cool, and you know, when it is widely supported by all these different browsers, it's going to make our, make our lives just a little bit easier. So it's so just a little bit about uh, columns. So basically, we've got the uh, column count property, we've got column gap, we've got column rule. By the way, there's also a columns property, okay, where we can double dip here. We can do something like uh, columns, and I can do two units. I could do something like um, auto space three. Now, what this would do is this would take away the need for um, column width. It's automatic width. You can set the widths of the columns, or um, or the column count. So there's also the columns property. But once again, for Chrome, Safari, Opera, um, Firefox, you'd have to put in the appropriate prefix for that. So just something extra to work with. So keep an eye out on this. It's going to come in handy pretty soon.